Two perfect heartbeats. Part three. Pregnancy after miscarriage. So, while being so raw and so disappointed, there was this deep part of me that was like, okay, God let this pregnancy happen that we had no clue about, that we were not anticipating, and then I got so excited, we both did, so what now? And we prayed, we wanted to know what we were supposed to do, were we supposed to just let it go, as in let go of our hopes for a family? Seeing as how, you know, being in South Africa, traveling in a car full time wasn't really the best time and place for all of that. Or do we just say, okay, God's in control, he will provide, let's not try to stop this. And so I just really wanted to be pregnant as soon as possible because I had been so excited. Because I'd, oh, I've always wanted to be a mom. So... We both kind of heard God say, don't worry about it. And that really frustrated me because I was like, come on, God, don't tell me don't worry about it. I want a yes or no. I want a finger writing in the sky. Yes, you will get pregnant soon. So every month that I didn't, I was just so sad. Funnily enough, though, it really only took like three or four months. <laughs> and that was... Again, really bad timing. We were getting ready to move offices in South Africa, so there was like 30 years worth of stuff to pack, and there, our, our supervisor is was in her early 60s. My husband is a strong, strapping young man, so he's good for lifting things, although he has does have back issues too. But anyway, I was as I was wondering if maybe I might be pregnant, it was just about the time that we were going to have to start, you know, lugging heavy things around for packing. And when I was like, um, I don't think I should be lifting myself before I told either of them <laughs> that this might be a possibility and they got offended at me. And then I realized I've got to take this test sooner than later so that we don't wonder too much. And so I bought that test. The test is bought. I'm taking it tonight in eight or so hours, depending on when Denise goes to bed, so we can have more privacy. I felt giddy at the pharmacy when I bought it. Most exciting R25 I've ever spent. Rand is the currency used in South Africa, and so this is basically like 250. And I was just like saving my pee and like really needing to go, just hoping that she would go to bed so that I could pee on the stick. <laughs> And even though you're supposed to take the tests in the first morning pee, but oh well. It was 8 p.m. when we both took that deep breath to look at the little plastic stick and saw the two lines. I'm pregnant. This time the news got its own page and practically its own book. And it, this was actually the first sign that it was twins because even though I was only like a week late for my period, it was like dark lines. So apparently you have more of that. HCG hormone? Is it a hormone? I'm not educated. You have more of that when you have twins because there's two of them. So we took pictures with the stick at, because that's what classy people do, you know. This was one of those kind of nice ones that had a little lid you could put on it so it wasn't quite as gross. <laughs> Because it, I, of the previous miscarriage, I should really go to the doctor as soon as possible just to make sure everything was okay. And we were just praying that there would be a heartbeat. Because we never got a heartbeat the first time around. And we were so nervous. We were listening to Bethel Redding. That, that album, um, We Will Not Be Shaken, was just like 
our lifeline to every single doctor's appointment. And we, after waiting all morning, we are here at Dr. Ramsabag's. I couldn't sing much to the music we were listening to. There were too many tears. We heard one of the songs in a completely different way. My heart will stay steadfast, for I know that you are good. Comforter, you are to me, shelter from the cold, constant how you carry me, never let me go, you are with me. Your hand holds me together. When I feel like I'm falling apart And I place my world in your hands And you come and steady my heart And that was a very, very meaningful song for us. We got to the doctor and finally I was on the table and in the early appointments I've gotten very used to this fact. They don't go over the stomach, they go the other route. <laughs> and, and so the wand was there and there were, the, all of a sudden the doctor said, oh, bankruptcy alert. There's two of them. I wonder if I have that footage. If I do, I'm going to insert that here. So that's turn one. Can you tell me what's ahead and things like oh, that? I want to do that. I want to get you central. You can see the heartbeat. So, that's about the size of it. Congrats, you guys. So, we're going to go. That's the head of the baby down there. Okay? So, these are limbs. Can you see? That's the spine. We're now growing across there. Now, if, you get an, if you've got a bit of imagination, that looks like a head baby I looking up. Yeah. right? Hmm. Right? And remember I'm enlarging it already, I can't enlarge it any bigger than that. Okay. And that I'm going to try, if you look at this picture, there's a spine growing down there. Right? That's a nuchal fold down there, but we'll check that now. That's the brain structure developing there. So we take a measurement from the crown to the rump, which is roughly there, which is this one, which makes you eight weeks pregnant. that are forming, that's a yolk sac there and there's a leg down there. So you can see it's in the, in the opposite direction of the other one. So here's this. I wrote these lyrics down and then I wrote, and kind of like, yeah I think you can feel a bit of how hard I was pressing the pen down. There are two babies growing inside me, twins. All we can do is laugh and blow air out slowly and wonder at the Lord's sense of humor. But I, I got so much footage because the doctor was so nice and he let us record. So that's cool. It's going to be really fun to put this together. I might have to split it up because I think I have a lot of footage if anyone's interested. But then again, I'm interested. I can keep it for posterity's sake. Two heartbeats. Two babies. Twins. Morton just kept going. <sighs> <laughs> he was in some shock. I just kept thinking, how is this possible? Because in my brain, I thought that if I were like double ovulator, that I would be having like two periods in a month or something weird like that. I don't know. I don't know what I was thinking. If anybody's curious, there is twins in my family, but they're identical twins on my dad's side, his sisters. But there's a different identical and fraternal. One of them is genetic and one of them is just a... I'm pretty sure it's fraternal that's genetic. And identical is just so weird. Nobody knows anything really. Like, why? <clears throat> so, 
but there's still a chance that they're identical, actually, because it depends on if or when the eggs split. There's a 30% chance that they're identical. The only way to truly be sure is a DNA test, and those things are expensive, so there's no point, really. Like, why would we spend money on something that doesn't make any difference to our lives anyway? Would anybody be interested in hearing more about my twin pregnancy? Because I got lots of notes. Let me know. <laughs> but the thing, one of the main reasons I wanted to do a part three of this is it's it's awesome to share about how how good it how good God is, how how amazing it was to find out we were having two kids, and if I had any clue about how amazing they would be. <laughs> I had no idea what was in store. <laughs> if you wonder why I'm laughing, check out some of my vlogs. They're 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 not like you know profesh vlogs with a storyline and a and a point. They're just kind of a lot of collections of cuteness and craziness that is my life. I'll put a card of that here. But yes, the thing I wanted to share is that my prayers changed so drastically from my very first pregnancy to my second one. My first, my first pregnancy, I was praying these prayers of, Lord, let these, let this baby be a mighty, mighty warrior. Let them be unafraid of the truth. Let them fight for justice. Fight for what's right. and be unwavering, and those are good prayers. Those are. I just changed going through what I went through and hearing so many other stories and just kind of being smacked in the face with suffering. I, I learned the importance of compassion and mercy and grace in a different way. And so I prayed, Lord, let my kid, and then, Lord, let my kids, <laughs> let them be compassionate, loving, gentle people. Let them be, let them be the kind of kids that will find the other kids that are being picked on and say, come and play with us. We don't, we don't need to worry about that. Let them truly love. My, my prayers changed, my heart changed. I know that God uses all of our suffering. Nothing is wasted in God's kingdom. Everything has a purpose. All suffering teaches us something, gives us more of a capacity for compassion and love and gentleness. Because in the end, those qualities are just as valuable as strength and fearlessness and all these really important sounding prayers. I hope that makes sense. Thank you for watching this. <laughs> Bye.